Hey, Cat back looking at Kano maps and we are going to look at ones with three variables and four variables. Okay, so let's go. So a Kano map with three variables uh, is going to look a little bit different to one that has two variables. So remember that I said using two variables you have two to the two combinations which was four. Now with three variables we'll have two to the three which results in eight combinations. So I'm just going to plop in a Kano map that I've already drawn up. Okay so it's got a similar structure to before except we've got more rows. So let's have a look. We've got to allow for combinations of A and B as well as A and B and C and all that kind of jazz. So what we do to allow that is we end up having two rows for false for A, and two rows of false for of uh, true for A. Uh, and here we've got B is actually split up into two parts. And then to allow all the combinations of C in there as well, we've got C up the top. So if they were all true, we would find where C was true, where B was true, and then also where A was true and find where all three intersect. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and we'll apply this by going from an expression to a Carnot map and then a Carnot map to an expression. Okay, so check out the next slide for, um, for a practice. So let's try with the expression A and B or B and not C. Okay, so you can come up with any expression and be able to find out, you know, how it would work. Um, so let's start with A and B. Now when it's A and B, it means that C could be true or false, doesn't really matter. So let's look at where A is true and B is true. So we're going to be looking at those two rows for A, and for B we're going to be looking at these two rows. So A and B, so the first two of those variables is true in both of those. Okay, so it actually makes it sort of a little pairing. Okay, so I've done that bit and now I'm going to look for B and not C. I'll change colors to make it easier. So now I'm looking for where B is true. So again, like we said, these two rows and not C, which is this one, so it's this row. So where is B true and C not true? And looking at the last two variables, it's actually both of those as well, so one and one. So my final solution for this is one, one, one. Okay, let's try it with another one. Let's try C or a and B. Okay, so now if C is true, that's this column, and basically it means that there's going to be all ones in that one. Okay, so this bit's done. What about the A and the B? So one of the easiest ways to do it is to look at the combinations here, and in that sets of in those sets of brackets that I've got, I've basically got the value of A, the value of B, and the value of C. So if I'm looking for A and B, I'm looking for a 1, 1, and whatever. Okay? So it is actually this box and this box. One of them's already got a 1 in it, so I just add a 1 there as well. So we've got C or A and B. Okay, let's try going the other way around from the Kano map to the expression. Okay, so I've actually started with an easy one, and I know that when I first saw this one, I was like, I don't really get it, but I'll explain it as we go. Okay, now we've got um, a Kano map where four of the eight combinations are true. And what is common about all of them? Can you see something that is always true? So we've got 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Now looking at A, A is sometimes 0 and sometimes 1. 
So the value of A is not actually affecting the result here. Okay, what about C? 0 and 1. And so sometimes that's 0 and sometimes that's 1. And it's also not affecting um, the variable result. But if we look over here, B is true. And when B is not true, the answer is not true. Okay, so if the 0 and the 1 of one of the variables go into both answers, then that variable is not actually affecting the outcome. So same as the A, 0 and 1 are both in there, and so that doesn't mean it's actually affecting the outcome, but B is the one that is. So when B is false, everything's false, and when B is true, everything's true. So this one is really easy, it is just B. So that was actually a grouping of four that allowed me to see that. So a lot of the simplifying of Carnot maps is about finding a pattern or finding a grouping and finding the expression to go with that particular grouping. So let's try one more. Okay, so we've got a populated Carnot map here and what I'm going to do is start off by looking at where I can group the information. So if I look, I've got a pair of ones here and a pair of ones here. So what it's going to be is expression combined you know, with the variables combined with ands, and then an or, and then the other expression. Okay, so one's going to go there, and one's going to go there. So let's figure out what they actually are. So starting off with this first one, um, what's true about them? So looking at the combinations, we've got 1, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 0. Now, the result for A and the result for C are both the same and if we look across to the side we can see that sometimes B is 1 and sometimes it's 0 so it's not actually affecting the result there so um, it looks like that part is A so A is always true and not C because C can't be true in these ones okay so that's our first part we put the brackets around it okay so done let's look at the second one separate that off. Okay, we've got 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. So in this case, C is actually not affecting the result, but A and B are. So it looks like it's not A and not B. Okay, now I'm doing that numerically, but you can also do it, it depends on how your brain works, and for me the binary kind of version works a little bit better. But you can actually see it by looking at the at the actual pattern here. Oh, sorry, that wasn't a wasn't two. It was actually just this one row, which is zero for B, zero for A, and it goes into both the columns for C. So it's just A and B that's used, but the not of both of them. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, let's have a look, quick look at four variables now. Okay, so four variables stands to reason that 2 to the power of 4 equals 16 combinations. Let's have a squeeze at what that looks like in a Carmo map. Okay, so we've got our 16 combinations there. Now, similarly to how we did it before, we've got the A has the two rows for true and two rows for false. B has two trues and a false and a false. Now instead of there just being two columns for C, we split it up like we did with the A and the B. So we've got two false, two true. And then our fourth variable, which in this case is D, has the same structure as the B, where you've got the two trues in the middle and the two falses on the outside. So this should allow every combination. Okay, so if we want all falses, let's look at false for D. Also happens to be a false for C. And we're looking for false for A. And that can coincide with a false for B, so that would be all false. If we wanted all true, we want to look for one that's A and B, so that's this one. Look for one that's A, uh, sorry, C and D, that's this one. There we've got our all true as well. Okay, so let's try and work now from, what did we do last time? We'll go from an expression to a Carnot map for two practices, and then for two practices we'll go from the Carnot map to the expression. Okay, let's go. 
Okay, let's start with something nice and easy. Let's say C or D. Yeah, just that one. Okay, so if... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean or, I meant and. C and D. Okay, so if it's going to be C and D, it's got to be fit somewhere within the C's and somewhere within the D's. Now, I don't know about you, but I saw an overlapping section there. And it was super easy. Where they overlapped was here. And if we look at, if we do this numerically, we've got uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so we're looking at C and D, so we can disregard A and B. And they are all true, true. Brilliant. Let's try a harder one. Okay, let's try A and D or B and not C. Okay, this could be hard. Let's try start with our A and D. So we're looking for overlapping A and D. So um, where A is true and D is true. So we're looking for something that's got the pattern of one, something, something, one. So let's look for those. We've got four of them by the look of it. Okay, so I'm just going to fill those in. One, 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 one. Okay, so now we want B and not C. So we are looking for a pattern that is don't worry about A, B needs to be true, C needs to be false, and don't worry about D. So we're looking for one zeros in the middle. So that has a one zero in the middle, that has a one zero in the middle. And I think that's actually it. So let's try and do this graphically to double check. So for not C, it has to be in this block. And for it to be B, it has to be in this block. Huh. Isn't that funny how I just completely disregarded these two? Anyway, I'll just fill it in. Strange that the brain didn't see that pattern. Okay, so we already had the A and D down the bottom as a grouping of four. And this one here is a grouping of four as well. So we can kind of visually represent that as a block and another block. Okay, so that's, we saw some groupings of two in other examples, and here we've seen two groupings of four. Um, and each grouping, as we said before, results in a part of the expression. The variables are combined with ands, and are then, so each set is then combined with an or. Okay, so let's go the other way around, so from a map to an expression. Okay, so here I've got a Carnot map that actually has some content. And what I need to start off with doing is trying to find groupings. Like, is there any commonality? Um, and I can see this is basically a set of four. And then um, this is actually a set of two. So let's start with the set of two. So what is true about them? Um, now, one has a pattern of 0, 1, 1, 1, and the other one has a pattern of 1, 1, 1, 1. So we might be able to say that B is true and D is true and also that C is true. So there's the overlapping thing there. So we've got, and A doesn't matter because in one spot it's false and one spot it's true. So we've got B and C and D. D, and then we'll look at the grouping of four. I'll do it in a different color to make it easier. Okay, so now my grouping of four, um, if I want to do this numerically, and by now we all know that I prefer the numbers, so we've got 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0, 1. I've just noticed. Um, so we've been doing all these exercises where I've done something wrong. Okay, so the correction in this, 
and sorry that we've actually got this far without noticing it, is in here it should be 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. So I've switched to purple now um, to go through this one. So ignore that. So we've got 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, so what is the same each time? Or what is common each time? And it is A and B. Okay, so it's not A and B. So we'll try with one more populated Carnot map going to an expression and see how we go. Okay, so we have another Carnot map here. Um, now, I've spoken a little bit about groupings, and one thing that I'll point out, um, and I'm not the expert in Carnot maps, I'll say that now, uh, what I've found with the groupings is that typically you can only group things as individuals, so just one, or a pairing, or a group of four, or a group of eight. You don't do like threes and fives and stuff. Okay, so based on that, I can see a grouping of four, and this little guy, he sits out by himself, but really, he's in the not A's column and the not C's column, and he probably actually has a buddy over here, so I'm going to do a grouping of two. Um, I, I can't explain why there's no groupings of five or whatever, but normally the binary numbers are one, two, four, eight, sixteen, blah, blah, blah. So it falls under that category somewhere, I imagine. Uh, but as I said, not hard and fast, and I'm not the expert. So I'm just going to roll with ones, twos, and fours. Okay, so I'm going to actually look at the pair first. And as I said, I tend to do this numerically. So zero, one, zero, zero, and zero, one, zero, one. And as you'll notice, I've got the fixed up version now. And what's common here is the values of A, B, and C. So we already had already noticed that with the A and the C. Uh, and we can see by the fact that they're next to each other that their Bs are the same as well. So what can we write that combines A, B, and C with ands to make that true? So it would be not A and B and not C. Okay, so I've done my little pairing over here, and now I want to focus on uh, the grouping of four. So I'll cross that out. This is my working out, and I'll change colors for you. Okay, so now if I want to try and do this visually, which, again, I suck at, but let's try it anyway. Um, so looking at the value of C, it spreads across two columns. C is sometimes false and sometimes true. So that doesn't seem to be affecting the value. Uh, B, so it's spread over two rows, sometimes false, sometimes true. Now A is always false for those four, and D is always true for those four. Okay, so I am starting to think that it would be, what did we say, not A and D. Now I'm going to do a little double check numerically. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 1, 1. So, yep, the last column and the first column, not A and D. Okay, so that is our expression. So hopefully uh, the Carnot maps is starting to make some sense for you. If you do want to have some practice, then make sure that you hop onto my blog and there are some worksheets to be able to practice these. Um, or email me questions for help. Good luck.